Okay, so good evening, everybody, and thanks for joining us uh, at our uh, discussion on social media, on uh, image-based abuse, on online harassment, uh, and I suppose all the wrongs um, of the new normal uh, in terms of internet behaviours. Uh, Senator Erin McGreen is with us uh, here this evening. I'm James Lawless. I'm a TD for North Kildare, chair of the Justice Committee, uh, and Senator McGreen is based in Louth uh, and is an uh, expert in these areas as well. So I'm going to start, maybe Erin, you might just talk us through um, I suppose recent developments in terms of uh, maybe some online abuses uh, and what's been going on and maybe just talk us through recent uh, developments there. Thanks Aaron. Thanks very much James. Yeah so everyone you're very welcome this evening and I suppose last week we saw the, the absolute shocking um, dumping of sexually based images on online and that is an extreme abuse of women's bodies and women's bodies should not be used against them and it's about time our legislation and our society caught up with that and um, the victimization and the assault on, on women and and some there was also men there as well involved in, in that in that abuse it's really really important that we as a country as a government legislate for the times that we're living in and um, you know as a, as a woman as a, as a citizen of this country, we really need those protections. We live our lives online these days. And it's about time, as I said, that we caught up with that, with that life. And, you know, you're, as you said, um, James, you are the chair of the Justice Committee. Um, can you talk us through the, you know, the current legislation that's there? And also, what's before you in the committee at the minute? Yeah, absolutely, Aaron. So, yeah, so we're taking on the bill. It's just interesting. I'm just listening to what you're talking about. Um, women's bodies being used against them, and I suppose a lot of this is gender based. And behind me, in the wall, I, I've had this for years the proclamation, um, and I suppose that guarantees equal rights and equal opportunities. And again, you know, it's, it's, it's what is it, we're over a, cent a century on, but it's so important, and I suppose it go does go to the core of uh, equality and, and all those issues. Um, so, in terms of where we are at the moment, I might just speak briefly about um, where what laws are coming before us and what laws currently exist. So the last time the law was updated to combat sort of online, you know, sorry, to combat abuse of any kind or harassment or stalking, um, or those kind of terms as they were defined at the time, um, was 1997. And a piece of legislation called the Non-Fatal Offence Against the Person Act uh, was put through quite a good, strong piece of legislation at its time, um, but it is 23 years ago. And that would have had things, for example, mobile phones were just starting to be used around the mid, mid to late 90s. So there was provisions that if somebody was texting somebody repeatedly or kind of phoning them up, you know, all hours of the night, and um, often a jilted lover, but but not always that kind of scenario, and um, it was an offence for them to be harassing them in that way. So that's Section 10 of the Not Fatal Offence Against the Person Act. Now the Law Reform Commission, uh, which is the legal body that does all the study into this stuff, uh, called for submissions uh, five years ago. I actually made a submission on it at the time because I've been interested in this stuff for a long time, um, and a lot of you know, and lots of other people made submissions as well. And one of the things that came out of it was the need to update our laws because they're just not there. They're not in the 21st century. They're not where they need to be. And they haven't had pace with the internet. I mean, 1997, when these acts were being put in place, uh, there was no broadband. Uh, we barely had the web. Uh, we definitely didn't have internet. We didn't have social media. Uh, we didn't have imaging. So I think it's, it's so apparent we've, we've traveled so far. Um, so the Law Reform Commission had a look at it. And one question came up about, and it's still the case today, Section 10 of that act that I talked about talks about harassment, and that can include telephone harassment. To, in, in theory, anybody you can right now, including some of the uh, atrocious cases you mentioned last week, could walk into a guard station and look for prosecution under Section 10 of, the, of that act. Unfortunately, the guards, uh, and I'm not blaming them, and the Director of Public Prosecutions have been reluctant to do that. And they've kind of had this confusion and said, look, there's, this is online stuff, this is social media, we're not cut, cut out for this. And um, I and others have said, I think there's probably a way you could do that. Um, but I suppose it's untested, it's on certain waters, and people need clarity, they need certainty, they need to know if something is done to them, if they're harassed, if they're stalked, if their image is taken with their consent and, and reproduced on the internet, that they've got some kind of comeback in that. Um, I think that's so important. So that brings us up to where we are now. Um, the Harmful Offences Bill, to give it its full title, the Harassment, Harmful Communications and Related Offences Bill is coming to uh, my committee, the Justice Committee, uh, Tuesday week, so this day week. Uh, 1st of December, um, and that's something that we prioritise. The committees, because the election was in February, the government was formed at the start of the summer, uh, the committees only got a place in September. And we as a committee, you know, across the board, all parties and none said at the start, we need to prioritise this legislation. The harmful offences, online harassment piece has to get priority. So even though there's lots of other stuff going on, 
we said to get this in ASAP. So we have that set now for the 1st of December, and we'll be taking amendments on it. So just to kind of give a flavor of the kind of things that does, um, number one, it takes harassment as an offense, it creates that as an offense in, in the online world, okay? So somebody's giving you, you know, um, horrendous abuse online, it's no longer going to be free for all, uh, as it currently is. And um, it does include um, what we describe as, and I know terminology is really important, I'll come back to you in a second on that, Aaron, but it describes intimate images, um, sharing without consent, um, and you know that's something we saw we saw last week. I suppose with some of those leaks. And um, it talks about threats, making threats online, um, and kind of pretending to be someone else, and, and, and kind of cyberbullying, I guess, which is which is often um, uh, termed as. So it does a lot. Um, I want to mention as well. There were um, myself and, and a few other members of the committee met some of the mothers of um, victims uh, at the start of this term in September, uh, and, and it's often termed Coco as law. Uh, Coco was a girl who tragically um, took her own life uh, as a result of bullying and cyberbullying and her mother has fought a really effective strong campaign uh, to try to get these kind of gaps built on the law so absolutely working with her uh, almost on a you know on a weekly basis kind of touching base and so again there's, there's all the online harassment outside of the intimate image sharing and, and the sort of privacy and, and dignity and um, issues that arise there you know and, and that kind of assault and um, there's also the cyberbullying piece as well for, for young people and young and old I guess um, and that really needs to be tackled. So there's an awful lot in here, really important we get it done. We're taking it into committee on Tuesday, 1st of December, um, and that'll bring it forward. And we'll be putting it back to the door then to make the next stage. And I know the minister and government are on board with it. Uh, I want to progress it as well. So that's just a quick kind of where we are now. Erin, I don't know if you want to talk about some of the, maybe the subtleties of that, the terminology, you know, it's so important. And the... Yeah, I suppose, I suppose yeah. talking to, you know, to victims groups myself, James, yeah. um, there's an awful, you know, the terminology that we use within this act is very, very important. You know, we have a chance to get this act, we have a chance to get it right and to use it for the best, um, for, for, you know, for the best, for the reasons that it's, it's meant to be there. Um, one, and um, one thing that, you know, instead of revenge porn and not enough yeah. out of the groups really want to pu push it as image based sexual abuse. Yeah. Um, and that encompasses so much more than just revenge porn because revenge porn really, you know, takes, you know, the, 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 the actus reus, I suppose, the, the, the meaning, the reason why you do that is re revenge against a partner. It's not always against an ex-partner. So it, it closes the door there for, you know, for passing on legislation or passing on images. Um, so those, those, the types of languages and um, language and terminology is so so important so i hope the committee really really look at those things and another another um another piece of 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 terminology that was that has been highlighted to me was the the description of the image instead of you know intimate that yeah. it would be sexually sexual images yeah. um that because that, again an intimate photo could be just of a, of a woman and her child a woman breastfeeding a child so yeah. those type of images it needs to be nailed down yeah. it needs to be really really strong and we needed to to put in the best protection as possible and um, i also um want to highlight the, the importance of it might not be you know enforceable as we discussed earlier on james the 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 the, the anti-screenshot technology um but we need to legislate for what could be um and you know we want to get this right as i said and you know ogre fianna fall are doing a great campaign on this as well because anti-screenshot technology we know ourselves that you know the the, the sharing of snapchat images has, was was a concern for for many parents and, and and children you know when snapchat became the the hit a couple of years ago so it's really really important that we look at all these um, um these this terminology um and make it make it part of what we discuss in society make it these terms not not we that everybody in society understands what this means and to bring it about a whole societal change on how we look at each other and um, how we respect each other how we how we look to what consent means so i just wanted to know what what do you what how do you feel about all yeah. about, about about those things yeah i think that's some really important points there and, and i think um you've actually i think touched on a really important uh subject so it's really important that we get the terminology right absolutely it is and i know there's a lot of sensitivity around this and Sometimes people with well-intentioned can sort of maybe use a phrase that may cause offence to others. Um, and so it's important we do that. But it's also important we do that in such a way that brings people with us, including the wider sort of pool of people who may not be as 
connected or, or tuned into some of these issues that really there should be no ambiguity um, as to what's right or wrong here. Um, but also in a way that broader society can kind of get on board and go, okay, that's, that's not cool. You know, that, that's, that's actually an offense. Um, that's really something that, that you shouldn't be doing. So um, we, we have to get the technology right in a way that, um, you know, recognize these things for what they are. Uh, but also the calls it out, uh, you know, in a sense that broader society uh, can come in on as well. Just looking, uh, I suppose, being that it's coming before the committee next week, um, I think the bit itself is pretty strong, even even in its original form. It, it, there's a lot in there. Some of the amendments that have been proposed, I think, are, are worth taking a look at. Um, so, for example, one of the amendments that's been suggested is a sort of extra penalty, like an aggravating factor, uh, where there's been uh, someone has been in a relationship maybe with a person or maybe where there, uh, an image has been captured as part of a, you know, at the time romantic, you know, intimate moment. Um, but that was then, you know, turned sour and, and they share that and sort of really took took um, took it out of the other person and distributed it inappropriately, etc. on the web. And I think there's two sides to that. I think absolutely, of course, that's completely wrong um, and heinous and, and should be punished. Um, it shouldn't be allowed um, and should be uh, part of this, absolutely, and it should be an aggravating factor. But there's other ways breach of trust can occur as well. Um, so, for example, and there have been, unfortunately, some of the scenario was like emergency services, people in positions of authority. Um, you know, I, I don't want to kind of call out any profession over another, but people that have been trusted, held positions of trust, um, be it in education, be it in um, keeping people safe and security, you know, in, in different, I suppose, professions that have been trusted with somebody's safekeeping uh, and have come into the possession of certain images or certain content because of that, and then have actually manipulated that uh, and shared it on. That's, you know, it's not the same relationship as a romantic relationship, it's very different, but it's equally a breach of trust. Uh, and it's something that I'd certainly be having a look to see is covered in the amendments. Uh, and if not, I think I think it should be in there. And um, you mentioned the screenshot uh, technology. And I know Ogrefina Fall have, have made some really good amendments on this area and really kind of uh, thinking outside the box as well. And the point there is something is on a uh, platform where the screenshots are disabled, but someone kind of gets around that. Um, how do you manage that situation? I think um, was it Snapchat in the early days had the kind of disappearing images, and you know I, I think there was pretty quickly ways found to uh, make them not disappear. Um, so look, there's always going to be as soon as you get the technology, there's ways around it. I suppose one of the important things that I found in this, but but also in other online areas, and um, it's so important when you're planning for the future, when you're legislating. Like we're talking now about a bill that was passed in 1997. That, that's like 23 years ago now. So if we get this right this time. It might last for 23 years or more. You know, there's lots of laws in our statute books for 200 years. So it's. I think it's important we don't be specific about what platform, you know, what social media platform, what channel, what technology is being used. What we do is we sketch out the principles that apply, and we say if you're doing something inappropriate, if you're sharing an image on an internet channel or on an online platform, um, and you're doing this, you're doing that. Um, the, you know, we 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 carve out. The offences, we carve out the punishments, we carve out the sanctions, and I suppose we call out the inappropriate behaviours, call them out not just in society, um, and we might come on to that in a minute, but call them out in law, so that we're, there's no uh, confusion about what, what, what's in and out. Um, but you do it in a kind of technology agnostic way, so for the purpose of today, that the same rule applies across Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Snapchat, Instagram, for example. Um, but in 10 years time, or even two years time, when there's other platforms out there, like TikTok is relatively new, you know, that wasn't there maybe three years ago. So we have to be able to write these laws in such a way that they're not tied to any one platform. And sometimes I get a little bit dubious. Sometimes the platforms themselves come along and say, well, we'll make our own laws and we'll be fine and we'll regulate ourselves, self-regulation. Two things. First of all, I, I don't trust any platform, nothing against any individual platform. They're in it commercially. So I, I, I don't think anyone's going to do it fully right without being, um, I suppose, made to do it by people like us in the legislature. But also, um, that's fine on that platform. But tomorrow, a new platform comes along, which hasn't self-regulated. Um, so it's another reason why I, I think we really do. And the responsibility falls on us. Uh, and I'm glad to say that across the board, we're, we're, we're rising to that challenge. Like I say, the committee was really keen. We prioritized this, made sure it's happening. It's happening as fast as it possibly could from the starting, uh, starting in September. It's being taken through committee stage now. Uh, and I expect it will become law possibly by the end of the year. Uh, but that's, 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 well, that's the process. Aaron, you were going to come in, I think, on, on society and kind of the obligation of society. And maybe there's a wider thing, thinking changes required here. How we think about our relationships, maybe how we think about individuals and how we respect each other. Is that, is that part of this as absolutely. well? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, James. And just go back to that. Like, it's really, really good news that by the end of this year, that this could be become, this will be on our statute books. It is really important. It's us, our job as legislators to stand up and legislate to protect our citizens. And at the minute, our citizens are not protected online. 
So it's really, really positive that, you know, the committee and the government and the cabinet tomorrow are going to look at this legislation and get it, get it through the house. And as a female who lives her life online, and like you do too, James, we all, we all do these days, it is really important that we just catch up with ourselves. So, and, you know, we catch up with ourselves legislatively, but we also must catch up with ourselves society. Yeah. And you know, we all, you know, um, we need some, I suppose, peer pressure maybe to, you know, act with, with some decency, some decorum online. And, you know, I, I often say that, you know, we don't walk down the street and shout sex, 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 sexually explicit, explicit things at yeah. people on the street. We don't curse at them. We don't want to. So why, why do we do it online? Yeah. And we yeah. need to protect ourselves online. We need to have respect for people online. The same way we are we are taught in primary school, right up to, yeah. to to you know our mothers and fathers always taught us to have respect for people, and we need to do that on, online. And we see so often the irony of people who abuse you online and hashtag be kind when you go in and investigate the, the investigate who they are. Yeah. So it really is. It's about education and towards you know, sexually explicit stuff um, you know situations and, and abuse we need to educate people um, on consent all of us um, and what consent means um, we see there's a, there's great programs in NUI Galway on, on, on teaching students what does that mean and we see you know the Department of Higher Education higher and, higher and further education doing doing that also and making sure that our students understand what consent is but we all we all of us in society need to be educated and empowered yeah. on how we um, operate online and you know i think you know what what there's a a national preventative strategy for gender and, and, and gender-based violence which is included in the program for government and i really hope that you know we get to make a an input on that national preventative strategy when it is when it is published because this has to encompass how we how we interact with each other how we how we make this play how we make this society fairer safer place both in you know in real world and in our virtual world because it's so important that we just we match up yeah. our our morals yeah. um so no yeah. absolutely yeah. no i think you're so right um and that, that wider societal change is something that is so needed and you know i suppose the web has brought us closer together uh, in so many ways um, and there's so many uh, you know not least in this pandemic I mean I, I think you know those of us that have tried to have I suppose as politicians we've kind of kept going but a lot of other areas are sort of finding new ways to do business as well you know we're all used to whether it's you know connecting up with, with granny you know on the zoom call now or you know or, or whether it's um, you know having that family chat at the weekend or whether it's just having your regular business meeting on a Monday morning or, or, or all the above you know studying online you know doing, doing your lectures online um, so many students are now um, even, you know, across even some second levels still doing stuff online. Um, you know, I know it, right through the, the original lockdown that was happening uh, and it's happening across third level, second level um, and, and so many other walks of life. But I suppose there is that kind of downside as well that we have. Um, one of the things I often talk about, and I've been working on kind of social media issues for a couple of years uh, and yeah. bringing in different legislation around them in, in other areas. This is such an important area, but in, in other areas as well. We kind of made this bargain. I don't think any of us kind of signed up to it. Um, we, we didn't sort of get out sort of piece of paper and, and, and sign on the dotted line, but we sort of agreed that we'd sort of not quite set our soul, but we'd sort of surrender part of our privacy and um, for the benefit of convenience. So Google Maps knows exactly the route that I take from North Kildare at home to the Dáil this morning uh, and how I'm going to go back. And, uh, you know, if traffic is heavy, it tells me, well, actually, you might want to go the other way. Uh, or whatever, um, it might know if I pick up, uh, if I run pull by the chip on the way home, because it doesn't know I have patterns, and you know, yeah. if it's a thousand night tree, it kind of learns that about you as you well. Have, you don't um, want to remember that. <laughs> yeah, so uh, not that I'd ever do that, it's all salads all the way, but, uh, but so we kind of give all this information about ourselves, and then we're shopping, and we're Googling, and we're searching, and if we're, if we're seeing the feeling sick or unwell, we're kind of looking for symptoms online, um, we're chatting to our friends online, you know, we're, we're banking online, we're, you know, we're using uh, smart apps, you know, on our phones to pay for stuff online. So, you know, they, there's a huge amount of data that we have kind of voluntarily taken. Uh, I mean, I remember 20 years ago when the supermarkets for our smart cards, like are the kind of loyalty cards, and people are kind of saying, well, is it okay if the supermarket knows everything I bought last week and every week and every week for, forevermore? 
but actually um, the internet knows that it helps a lot more than that. So in a way we've kind of done that and said, that's actually, we're, we're, we're doing this and we're okay with doing this if it's, um, if it makes our lives easier and if it makes us connect and do, do our business and, and, and get about the place easier uh, and book our next holiday and it kind of knows where we want to go because we went there last year or knows where we want to go because we spent the last three months searching uh, for that when you can all dream of holidays maybe post, post pandemic, whenever that is. But the flip side of that is that we've kind of given all this information and did we ever stop and think and read all the different disclaimers and notices about it? Um, and I suppose where it gets kind of nasty is we see campaigns like uh, in the 2016 US presidential election and um, in the Brexit referendum. Um, I think it's pretty, it's pretty well argued at this stage that agencies like Cambridge Analytica said data mining too is on top of all that information and sort of ran what we all thought were the slices of our lives, put them all together into a big pie and said, okay, here's how you're going to win the vote. Um, and not by the force of your arguments or by normal democratic means, but by manipulating people's hopes, fears, and dreams, which they've freely provided to the internet. Um, so that's the kind of stuff that gets really scary, that kind of, um, you know, that, that bird's eye view that some of the big, and, and not just political uh, players, but some of the big corporations now have of us as well. Um, if we're Googling our, our health uh, worries on, on, on the line, you know, we think we have Corona or think of something else. Um, how do we know that our Alexa app that's listened to it, that's relaying it back to Google, that's sending it back to our health insurer, isn't going to turn around and charge us more the next day because, you know, because we gave it all away. Um, you'd hope not, and, and that's part of the deal, um, but I suppose you can never be fully sure. And unfortunately, we've seen so many abuses and leaks and hacks uh, across the board um, that that, that's just, that that remains a worry. So look, there's an awful lot to be done. Um, I, I have other legislation in the mix as well. I have a social media transparency bill, a uh, political advertising bill, um, there's an, you know, there's, there's, there's a huge amount of that's going on. We also need to look at online safety commissioners, go back to, I suppose, the exercise today. Yeah. Um, and then one thing, again, go back to something I said earlier, that it's really important. We need to pass the laws because we need to mandate this to happen. Um, but we need to give practical tools to regulators. So the likes of a takedown power. If somebody has, if there's an image of somebody being shared, if there's a post with somebody that's really horrifically um, taken advantage of them or, or, or assaulted them effectively online, um, we need to be able to take down powers. That it's not it's not good enough to say we've well, got to go to court in three weeks' time. If you get before the judge, you might be looking at an order in three weeks later, and six weeks later, maybe the image is gone. No good. This needs to be something you you, you contact the regulator and say I'm really concerned. This is up now. It's live. It's on the web, and it's taken down in a matter of every if not minutes, hours. That's the kind of turnaround we need. So look, I might leave it there, Aaron. I think we've had a really good discussion. Um, certainly for my part. Do you want to close out with maybe a few concluding remarks? Just, I, I want to thank you, Aaron, for your uh, continued engagement. I know we've had a lot of discussions on this topic uh, in, in this new Dorland Challenge. Um, and thanks to everyone that tuned in tonight as well. I hope it's been useful. You can feel free to contact me um, on, on social media. Um, Lawless Jay on Twitter. You'll find me on Facebook. Or just send me an email, james at jameslawless.ie. Uh, love to hear your thoughts uh, on this. And of course, we will be taking amendments on the bill if you have any thoughts on that as well. So I'll close out for me. Um, Aaron, I'll leave the final word to you if you want to want to uh, finish off with some words of wisdom for us there as well. Yeah, I suppose. Thank you very much, James. Um, and thank you all for, for, for calling in to, in to see us this evening. It's really important that we get this get this past legislation passed. We need to protect our citizens, as I said before. And we need to move on with a, with a transparent, uh, uh, you know, a safe online environment. And um, it's for the betterment of us all. And um, yeah, likewise, I would be very glad to hear from from all of you and any of you that are interested, um, you'll find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and Aaron McGree, Aaron at aroctus.ie. So thank you all very much, and hopefully we'll see you all again soon. Thank you. Take care. Good night. Thank you.